soil and water interactions. Uh, sandy soils versus clay soils are like complete opposites. So when it comes to water and the infiltration rate, so how fast water goes into soil, it has to, it'll go really fast into the sandy type soil because there's pores in there. So the water can travel through. But clay soils are just like a solid mass. It might as well be like a block of concrete. There's no water that's gonna get in there. It takes a long time to get in. And the picture that I'm missing here that I meant to put in here was the picture of the hand squeezing the soil with the water dripping out of it. So that's how you can tell, like when you pick up clay soil and you pick it up in your hand and it feels pretty wet, like it's damp all the time. So you squeeze it as hard as you can and you don't get any, there's no water comes out of it. It's locked in there really tight. So just remember that whatever the type of soil is, is that when you squeeze soil in your hand, the drop of water that comes out, that's the water that's available to plants. So if you pick up a handful of soil and you go, oh, it feels pretty moist, you know, it feels pretty good. Just squeeze it as hard as you can and look for the droplet of water. If you don't get a droplet of water there, there's no water there for plants. So percolation rate, and that's how fast that the water moves through the soil, right? And we'll talk a little bit more about doing perk tests as we go along here. But percolation is just literally that when the water trickles down through soil, it pulls fresh air in behind it. So it's always replenishing gases. So the, uh, the soil interactions where water molecules can connect up with other ions in the soil, especially like nutrients and things, and it can uh, help them move through the soil and it can also help break them up a certain amount. But the saturation point is really important. That is just where the water or the soil itself gets completely filled with water and then the excess is leaking away. So it's filled to what they call field capacity so if we water and water and water and water till it can't take any more water and it's starting to run off now, it's starting to, to leach away because it's, uh, it's hit its saturation point, right? So the permanent wilting point is a term that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to kill the plants, but when a plant wilts, it loses its turgor pressure. So turgor is when a plant is firm, it's got good turgor pressure. And then as it, as it starts running out of water, it starts to wilt a little bit, right? And usually if you want to water, you want to catch it just as it's at the very early stages of wilting and needing to water. If you let it wilt completely, it gets to the point, what they call the permanent wilting point is actually when you see damage on the plants. So that's when the leaves turn crispy, it turns brown, it's not looking good. Plants probably fine. This kind of thing happens in nature all the time. But when it comes to humans in landscapes and somebody puts plants into it and they spend money on plants and they see a brown leaf on the plant, they immediately panic, right? And then it's like, oh, this is not good. It's lost its quality. It hasn't lost its life, but it has dry, it dried out too much. It's gone to that permanent wilting point where some parts of the plants may wilt and completely not come back. So this was that part about, uh, you know, how when you fill water to its field capacity, that's when it's fully, it's got all the water in it it can take, and then the excess water is running away. So that's field capacity. And then this sort of a central stage is where uh, that excess water is drained away, and what you're left with is this beautiful ratio. Again, 25% water, 25% air. The hard particles make up about 45%. You can see how it's, that's how it's sort of piecing together. And then you'll notice here that in this, this is what they call that permanent wilting point, but you'll notice there's still water there. You can still see it. But if you pick up that soil and feel it in your hand, it feels slightly damp. And if you took a measurement and took it and put it in a, its own isolated space and tested it for its, its amount of humidity, it would always have 25% humidity even when it's powdery dry. And even when it's powdery dry, this hygroscopic water, it's called hygroscopic, it's just attached so tightly to the, uh, to the actual particles, it won't let go. So how do we identify soil? It's very easy actually, uh, but there, there's a couple parts that you just need to kind of get a grasp on is that what we've been talking about is the texture of the soil. So fine, medium, coarse, right? So like clay, silt, and sand and those you can feel those with your hands right 
So you can feel if you pick up soil and you moisten it and you rub it in your hands and you, you kind of push it out and you can feel it. Is it slippery like grease? Like if it's really greasy, then you know for sure it's probably got clay in it. If it feels kind of uh, sort of in between somewhere where it's not really excessively gritty and it's not really slippery, it's just somewhere in between, it's probably silty. And if it's really gritty and you can feel, you can feel the sand in it right away so you can tell if it's sandy, right? So the other thing is you do this, uh, this quick sediment test where you put a, a jar of water, actually you just fill the jar about half to three quarters way full of, water, of soil. Then you top it up with water, put the lid on and shake the heck out of it. And then what happens is over time it settles out and it'll always settle with the coarse rock on the bottom. So it's usually like gravelly soil, then sand, and then gradually getting thinner and thinner and thinner and we're going through this silt range. This is very typical of what you would see in the Okanagan here, is you'd see predominantly sand and silt. And then just a little tiny bit of clay on the very surface. You can just barely see a little line on the top. And notice that the water's cloudy. So the water that's cloudy, that's clay. The clay particles are so tiny that they, they just suspend and float in water. It's like muddy water. It's full of clay, right? So you, if you leave it long enough, this water will turn clear and this little layer down here will get a little bit thicker. Uh, remember that if this water is a dark color, if it turns blackish, that's your organic matter. That's your beautiful compost of black humus. So when this turns darker color, you know you got more organic matter.